Welcome to Gateway. We're so glad you're with us this morning on this bright and sunny day. We have the opportunity today to connect with God and experience His presence in our lives. We believe that God desires to work in powerful ways, and we're so excited to see that this morning. In the Psalms, King David often would speak to his soul. In Psalm 57, he said, Awake my soul. So whether you've had your coffee this morning or whether you're still not fully awake, let's stand up and let's tell our soul to sing God's praise aloud as our team leads us this morning. Amen. It's so good to join together and sing. Come on, let's sing this together. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. Praise 
there are some powerful truths in that song. I hope your soul is a little bit more awake now. You may be seated. If you're newer to Gateway this morning, we wanna say welcome to you. We're so glad that you're here and we would love for you to connect with us. And there are various ways to do that. First is either through using the QR code that's on the screen or through visiting our website or visiting the welcome desk out in the atrium. We even have a little gift for you. So don't forget to stop on by after the experience. Today, we're having our first of three sessions of We Are Gateway Steps and it'll be happening after the experience out in the connections room. It is about 20 minutes long and it helps you know what We Are Gateway stands for and how you can become a part of the We and We Are Gateway. Fun and exciting thing that's coming up is we're looking to do a missions trip to Honduras in the fall. Very exciting, I know. There will be a meeting on Wednesday, April 17th at 6.30 p.m. where you can come and find out what our vision is for the missions trip and how you can partner with us or join us in that. Our next Sunday series in May is coming up soon and it will be about the pursuit of wisdom. We'll be having seminars that run along our Sunday series and follow along with it. And it will be based on a book called The Wisdom Pyramid. We encourage you to buy it online and start reading so you can follow along even deeper and closer. We wanna say thank you for your giving. If you've already been a part of the Gateway family, the partnering that you do with us helps us make a difference in many lives, in our church community and out in the community as well. And if you're newer to the Gateway family, we encourage you to start that journey and partner with us so that we can continue to make that difference. There are various ways to give, either through using the QR code on the screen or through visiting our website or visiting the desk out in the atrium. We'll stand together. Let us continue to praise the Lord as our team leads us. So the song we're gonna sing, we introduced at Easter time and we're declaring that God has done great things in the past and that he continues to do them. Miracles after miracles after miracles. And so we sing this and we begin to declare the truth of who God is. Working it all for good. 
For this week, and I was practicing this next song, and uh, and I got to the line in the bridge where it says, "Your goodness is running after me," and I'm going to tell you honestly, I'm challenged to sing that line sometimes because I've experienced times in my life where that it does not seem like the truth. And so I was thinking, if I'm going to sing it, God, I want it to be authentic. So I was looking in the scripture. And I found it in the Psalms, and I love that we've been talking about Psalms so much already, even though we did not connect about that. And it's actually a Psalm of David, and he says, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And if you know the story of David, he was a king, but he did not always experience high highs. He was often pursued, often in very challenging circumstances, often at the fear of losing his life, and yet he declares that God's goodness was pursuing him. And in fact, it's found in Psalm 23, one of the most famous Psalms we know. And I loved that, because how often do we hear Psalm 23, especially in moments of great need, maybe at a funeral, where we're reminded of the truth of who God is. And so I'm not sure what you've come in with today. Maybe you've come in and you're in a spot where God's goodness does not feel like it's chasing you. Or perhaps you are here where you're like, God, I'm just sensing your goodness. I'm so grateful for it. Wherever you are, may I just encourage you to know that God's goodness is pursuing you, to know the truth, to begin to declare in faith that God's goodness is pursuing you all the days of your life. Let's sing about God's goodness today.
I'm so glad for God's goodness and His faithfulness. He truly is so faithful and so good. Before Pastor Tim comes up to speak, I invite you to remain standing and join me in reading Psalms 42. Let's read together. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Thank you. You may be seated. Students, if you are between grades six to eight, you are invited to head over to the atrium for your program now. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, worship team. How many of you having a good time so far today? Woo! Having a good day? Yeah. It's good to be able to gather together, to lift up our voices together to the Lord who is so worthy of our praise and uh, to be able to declare beautiful truths about God's goodness and his love and, and to read scripture together that's real and honest and, and has a heartfelt passion to it and, and is encouraging. I hope that as you read that, there was something inside you that, that, was, that was saying, you know, I, I can relate to this. This is part of my life. This is what it's like for me sometimes, but I need encouragement in this kind of a way in order to look to the Lord and put our hope afresh in him. So how do you like the new chairs? Not bad, eh? How many want to go back to the old ones? Weirdo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you like to be closer to people beside you, right? Like really close. Uh, you know, it's great because we have a little bit more space now. So now you don't feel so compelled to leave, you know, three chairs between you and the next person. But uh, a little bit of a history uh, on our chairs. Uh, back in uh, 2008, when we were building this building and we were meeting in a high school in between our old building and this one, uh, we were looking for chairs for this new gathering space. And, and we happened to find that there was uh, a, a hotel in town. I believe it was the London Convention Center that was getting rid of all their old banquet chairs. And emphasis on the word old because we were already well used then, all right? And that was 16 years ago. So we landed all of those banquet chairs. I think we bought like a thousand of them for like 10 bucks each. It was a crazy deal. But um, how many of you know they did their duty, right? We wrung every bit of life out of them, you know? And we had to keep throwing stuff out because it was breaking down and all that. But thank the Lord. We do have some of those chairs throughout the building, but we thought it is time. It is the right time. Thanks be to God. He is blessing us as a church and you finally get some new chairs, all right, on Sunday. So we're excited about that. Sometimes it's the little things, right? <laughs> uh, we're so glad that you're here. And some of you are here for the first time. You're like, these, aren't, these are new? <laughs> yep, they're new. <laughs> But uh, love is an amazing thing, isn't it? You don't sound convinced. <laughs> love is an amazing thing, isn't it? Some of you wives should have gone like this, right? You know what I mean? He said love is amazing. There are different kinds of love, right? Uh, I love chocolate. I love motorcycles. I love my wife. At least I hope those are different kinds of love, right? <laughs> My wife confirmed when she was here in the first experience, they'd better be different kinds of love. Um, it can often come down to how much love we're talking about and what that love actually looks like when it's shown, right? One, love, uh, one song uh, says it this way, love is all you need. Another song says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Another one says, love will keep us together. 
I know they're all really old songs. <laughs> Those of you who are 40 and under are going, what? Um, but sometime, someone a very, very long time before that also said these words, faith, hope, and love remain, but the greatest of these is love. So why is love what we need? Why is love what the world needs now? Why will love keep us together? And why is love the greatest of these? The truth is, love shows what's really important to us and how important it is. In Mark chapter 12, verse 30, there are the words of Jesus that we are using for this entire series. And he said it like this, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love with all. Welcome to our spring series called Love With All, where we are really diving into these words of Jesus and trying to wrestle through a little bit. What do these words mean? And what does it actually look like for us to do that? The idea that Jesus was conveying here in his words, as he quoted these words that were spoken by God thousands of years before, is this. Love with everything you've got. Every part of you, your desires and your motives, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions, your struggles your intellect, your will, your time, your talents, your resources, all of it. And I think one of the biggest struggles that we have with Jesus' words is this little word, all. Will you say that word with me? All. I mean, if he had just said, okay, let me tell you guys how to love God. Okay, ready? Write this down. It's with your heart and with your soul and your mind and your strength. We would just go, Oh, thank you for that Bible lesson, Jesus. That was wonderful. Now I'm a little more educated on how to love God. We would just think he was telling us how to love God. But Jesus was telling us much more. He was telling us how much to love God. Because how much we love God is a lot more important than just how we love God. Knowing how is great. It's wonderful truth and information, but knowing how much can make all the difference in our lives. Because the word all doesn't leave room for half-heartedness, does it? It doesn't leave room for indifference or apathy, does it? It's like being all in and going all out all at the same time. That's what he's going for here. Well, last week, we looked at loving the Lord with all our heart which is about having an undivided heart for God, giving him our best, fighting against indifference, abiding in Jesus, being devoted and committed and obedient, listening and serving. It's important to note that loving God with everything needs to start with the heart. When that is right, then it leads to everything else that we're gonna to continue to see in this series. So today, we're taking the next step going after loving the Lord with all our soul. This is such an appropriate next step from loving with our heart. Soul is an interesting reality. Um, as you begin reading the scriptures way back in the book of Genesis, you will see that even from the beginning, the soul is something that is reserved for humankind. Genesis chapter two, verse seven says, the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Now, here's a couple of interesting things. The Hebrew word for man is Adam, which is where we get the name Adam. And it is directly related to the word for ground, which is Adama. And when it says the man became a living being, some translations render it as a living soul. In fact, the words creature, being, or soul can be interchangeable there. But in this particular way, it is used only of mankind, separate and distinct from all other creation or creatures, specifically because God breathed into humans the breath of life. That is why we became a living being. That is why we are alive today. That is why we have a living soul. How many of you know the reason you woke up breathing today is because God breathes his life into you? 
right? Some believe that the soul and the spirit are essentially the same thing. However, there are some differences. Spirit is more closely related to our heart as we looked at last week. It's the center of our being, the source of our devotion. Spirit speaks of that which God resurrects and makes alive in Christ when we place our faith in him. It is the new person, the center of worship and relationship and fellowship with God through Jesus. So if that's the spirit, if that's the heart, what is the soul all about? Let's take a look at it together. The first thing that the soul involves is personality. This includes our uniqueness. How many of you know you are different than everybody else? <laughs> Some of you did not want to admit that. Nope, I just want to be like, how many of you know you're very different from everybody else, right? Is that true, All right? The person beside you could probably confirm that for you, okay? But you're unique. You've been made unique. This includes your aptitude or your propensity for certain things. It includes your gifts that you're given long before you ever develop skills because all of our gifts come from who? Right? Secondly, soul involves humanness. That is our basic nature as humans. It is inextricably tied to the body. So it can be referred to as our flesh or our sinful nature. Since our human nature is now sinful, and that is the part that we struggle with or we wrestle with or that hinders us. The soul and the body are, are, are intermingled together. Our desires are really tied to that. And the third is weakness. This includes things like selfishness, our sinful tendencies as a result of our humanness and our limitations, our struggles, um, our inability to truly master ourselves, including our nature and our future. And lastly, soul involves emotions. This includes uh, the whole gamut of them, feelings, desires, passion, excitement, despondency or anger, various moods. The soul can be then described as the good, the bad, and the ugly of who we really are, really. Essentially, our soul includes our brokenness. Now, let's be honest. In our culture, what do we often do with things that are broken? We throw them out, right? You just order another one on Amazon. I did that this past week with our coffee maker. I just throw it. I'm not going to try to fix my coffee maker. You know what I mean? We throw them out. And do you know what else we think? We think that God doesn't want things that are broken. But the beautiful truth is that God wants us in all our brokenness. How many of you are glad for that today? He is a specialist at repairing brokenness. He never throws you out. So why did God include this aspect of love? What is significant then about loving him with our soul? Well, the truth is, if we're honest, this is probably the biggest area of struggle when it comes to loving God. It's a struggle to love God with our soul, to love with our personality, no matter how we're wired, to love with our humanness, which can be so fallen and sinful, to love with our weakness, when we can be so selfish and limited, to love with our emotions, when they can either be really dull or extreme and all over the map, unpredictable. In other words, our soul can in so many ways get in the way of really loving with all. It can hinder us. It would not be inaccurate to say that loving the Lord with all our soul is one of the most challenging ways to love him, especially in the face of difficulty or trials, tragedy, all the temptations and the weaknesses and emotions that come with that. It's the part of us that doesn't naturally want to. It doesn't, we don't gravitate towards it. It's selfish and stubborn and weak, and it can be emotionally unhealthy or unbalanced. Now, you remember the story um, of creation in um, Genesis, chapter two, the creation of man and woman. Sadly, in the next chapter, the man and the woman fell into sin. And ever since then, 
all of us have had a sinful nature, a soul that is desperately in need. What are we in need of? Well, every single aspect of our soul, our personality, our humanness, our weakness, our emotions, every single part of our soul needs redemption, first of all. It needs to be rescued and released and delivered. Every part of our soul needs sanctification. It needs to be cleansed and purified and set apart and made holy. Every part of our soul needs formation. It needs to be changed and shaped and transformed and fashioned. These things together speak of salvation, the complete work of God in us to save us in every way we need to be saved. Someone once said, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. And that's because of our soul. Our soul desperately needs God and his grace and his life-changing power and his eternal love. And how many of you are so glad today that we have all of those things from him, right? Our soul doesn't just need those things, though. Our soul desperately needs to love him back in all of our uniqueness and our humanness and our weakness and our moodiness. Did you ever think of that truth? Not only do you need God's love and grace, you need to love him. You need to love him. Your soul needs to love him back. It's a need we have. There's an amazing story in Acts chapter 16, uh, which goes like this. The apostle Paul and his traveling companion Silas went to the city of Philippi, which was a Roman colony and the leading city of Macedonia. While they were there, a woman who was possessed by a demonic spirit through which she was a fortune-telling slave started following them around, telling everyone that these were servants of the Most High God who were telling people the way to be saved. Although this was true, she did it constantly for days, thereby distracting, detracting, and discrediting what they were trying to do. Paul got so fed up that he finally turned and commanded the evil spirit to come out of her, which it did. The slave woman's owners were furious and they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the city magistrates who had them stripped, severely flogged, thrown in prison and chained in stocks. Now, let's pause for a minute. In this story so far, we can see personality, humanness, weakness, and emotions on the part of everyone. Lots of them, different kinds of them. The, these two men ended up in a very difficult situation. Now, rather than just reading a nice Bible story and going, oh, that's great, let's, let's really think about it for a minute. Let's put ourselves in the story. How would you view this circumstance if you were in it? How would you feel? How would you respond? Like, what would you do? What would I do? What would it look like for you, for, for your soul? Let's look at the rest of the story. It says that around midnight, they started praying and singing worship songs to God. And suddenly there was an earthquake that shook the prison and all the doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Well, the jailer saw this and, and he, he knew that he was gonna be executed. So he almost took his own life because he thought they had all escaped. But Paul told them they were all still there. And then they led this man and his entire household to faith in Jesus. And he baptized them. He washed their wounds. He made them a meal. He brought them into his home. And he was completely filled with the joy of the Lord. What an amazing end to a difficult story, eh? You know, in Psalms 42 and 43, which we read part of this morning, King David said these words, Why, my soul, are you so downcast? 
Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. He said this three times. In the extremely bad situation that Paul and Silas found themselves at the time when, when it would have been the most difficult to be full of faith and gratitude, to rejoice and be glad, to keep believing and trusting God, when it would have been so easy for their souls to be downcast and disturbed within them, when it would be the most difficult for their souls to put their hope in God and to praise Him. It was then... It was right then that they began to raise their voices to their Savior and to their God in prayer and in worship, giving thanks and praise to God from the depths of their souls. It was then that they truly loved the Lord their God with all their soul. And my friend, that is what God desires for you today. He desires that in the midst of the most difficult circumstances, when you the least feel like it, that you will be able to love and worship the Lord with all your soul. As David said in Psalm 35 verse 9, my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. That's a good thing to tell our soul, isn't it? Rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. Now remember when I said that every aspect of our soul needs redemption, sanctification, and formation. Loving the Lord with our soul actually has a remarkable role in our lives towards that process. So let's take a quick look at it together. The role of loving with our soul. Here's how it goes. Some of you will find this really helpful and beneficial for your spiritual life and your walk, your faith. First of all, when we place our faith in Jesus, God redeems us by his grace through the sacrifice of Jesus. And God sanctifies us by cleansing us, setting up us apart for him, and declaring us holy and righteous. Okay? But then, secondly, as we love God with all our soul, we are then continually sanctified made more holy and more like Jesus, and we are increasingly formed, changed, made into what God has designed us to be. That is the amazing role that loving God with our soul has. And I have news for you. That second part does not happen automatically. Yes, we experience redemption, and sanctification from the Lord when we first come to Jesus and place our faith in him. But then we need to love him with our soul on a daily basis. And as we do that, we experience from that continual sanctification, being made more holy, more like Jesus, formed and changed into what God wants us to be. The, the same Apostle Paul would write these words to the Corinthian church. Listen to them. He said, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why. For Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. In other words, in the things that my soul struggles with. For when I am weak, say it with me, then I am strong. My friend, that is what God has for you. Amen, Pastor Tim. <laughs> Now, I know not all of what we just read there is really appealing to your soul. I get that, okay? I don't really want all the struggles, the weaknesses, the insults, the hardships, the persecutions. But I want to tell you, whenever they come, you can know that when you're weak, you will be strong because Christ's power rests on you. That means when it is so hard to love God with all our soul, when our personality and our humanness and our weakness and our emotions get in the way, we will find that his grace is indeed sufficient for us. 
we will find that his power is made perfect in our weakness. That his power will rest on us and that when we are weak, we will find in the depths of our soul, we are strong because we are loving the Lord our God with all our soul and we're experiencing all of his grace and his power in our lives. You want that today? I do. You see, just as loving the Lord with all our heart is key to knowing him and having a relationship with him, Loving the Lord with all our soul is key to being transformed by him and made more like him. That is, made more humble and willing and trusting and obedient and strong. So, how do we love the Lord with all our soul? Well, as we begin to look at that today, I do want to tell you, first of all, that it needs to be characterized by authenticity. We got to be real. We need to have genuineness and honesty, no pretense. I have some news for you. God knows exactly what you're like, okay? He made you. He knows you better than you know you. You'll never fool him in any way. So just be real. Be authentic in your love. It also needs to be characterized by commitment because remember we said God loves you the way you are but he doesn't wanna leave you that way. Commitment is how we push past that. That means the desire and the dedication to being formed and transformed is huge. This means you need to actually want it and to commit yourself to it because your soul needs it. So how do we love the Lord with our soul? What does it look like in everyday life? This is pretty straightforward, but I genuinely hope it's helpful, okay? So first of all, in our personality, how we love the Lord is simply by loving him with who you are, not with who you aren't yet or not with who you want to be or not with what somebody else is like. It's who you are. It's with the way he actually made you, with the aptitude you have, with the gifts and uniqueness that you have that are from him. Using those gifts for his kingdom instead of for yourself and seeking after him continually. I love what King David said in 1 Chronicles 22 when he was instructing the leaders of Israel. He said, devote, that's a beautiful word, devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. There's something passionate in there. Secondly, in our humanness. In our humanness, we love the Lord in our authentic human nature with which we struggle and are tempted and tried. We love him by denying and crucifying our flesh with its passions and desires. We love him by honoring him with our bodies and resting in him and his salvation. He calls us to that. In 1 Corinthians 6, Paul said, you're not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. That means he owns us. We belong to him. In Psalm 62, David testified, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. My friend, it is as you love him in that humanness that you discover you can truly rest in him exactly as you are. Thirdly, weakness. That means we love the Lord in the midst of our selfish tendencies, in our limitations, by surrendering to his will and his purposes instead of our own, by letting his power be made perfect in our weakness and by trusting him as the master of our life and our future. This really does come down to trust. And as we, as we embrace our weakness and the struggles we have, when we trust the Lord, we will find strength and foundation in that. I love what Hebrews 6 says. It says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. When your soul is weak and when it's failing and when it's up and down all over the place, this is an anchor for it to hold it steady, firm and secure. And emotions. Love the Lord with all your feelings, your desires, your passions, your moods, allowing his Holy Spirit to temper them and to bring them in line with him and his will. 
to then produce the fruit of Jesus' nature, that is the fruit of the Spirit in you, and then to thirst for him more than anything else. I love what we read this morning in the scripture where David said, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. And in the next verse, my soul, say it with me, thirsts for God, for the living God. I encourage you today, God desires to produce in you a thirst for him, a longing in your heart to love him with all you have, in your weakness, in your humanness, in your emotions, in every part of you, in your personality, to love with all your personality, all your humanness, and all your emotions and weakness, to love him as you are, as a living being, a living soul from the depths of your being, from all the parts of you that don't naturally want to, is what he's inviting you to do today. Love is an amazing thing, isn't it? Especially when we truly learn to love the Lord our God with all our soul. I invite you to close your eyes for a minute. Before we finish today, in the Apostle Peter's first letter, he wrote some amazing and powerful words that I want to read for you today. And I encourage you just to receive them into your soul. I want you to receive these as God's word for you, as a beautiful result of God's mercy and of genuine faith and of loving the Lord with your soul. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Thank you, Lord, for your beautiful word. Thank you for the truth of your word, which is deposited in our souls and our hearts today. That, Lord, we can know that you are calling us to know you more. You are calling us to love you more. You are calling us to sacrifice and to give ourselves fully to you and to say, I want, Lord, you more than anything else, and I want to love you with all that I have. Lord, in the midst of difficulty or weakness, humanness, struggles that we have, the way in which we are truly wired, and even all that comes with that, the emotions that we that we have inside. Lord, I pray that those will not just be hindrances, but they will be opportunities for you to show us what it really means to love you in the midst of all that. Lord, teach us by your spirit how to do that more in the days and weeks to come. Help us to love you with all of our soul. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, before you leave today, just take a few minutes and just turn to a few people around you, one, two, three, four, whatever. And I'm going to invite you to just discuss something a little bit that goes like this. With which areas of my soul do I struggle the most? Now, I know that sounds like, ooh, I have to really be honest with people, all right? Be as open and honest as you feel comfortable with today. But, and then what are some specific ways the Lord is calling me to love him with my soul? It may not be exactly the same for everyone, but take a few minutes and then when you are on your way out, we're gonna give you a card that has these questions on it and I encourage you to take one and then write your thoughts on it this week and to see what God might stir in you 
and birth in you, all right? So take a few minutes, discuss that with each other, and we'll be back to close.
Well, thank you for joining us this wonderful Sunday morning. I trust that you're going to leave inspired, encouraged, and challenged. Our prayer team will be available up at the front, so if you need prayer for any reason, we'd love to partner with you and pray with you and pray for you. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining us and see you soon.